Welcome to the 10th session in the second module in the course on signals and systems. We continue discussing the relation between signals and vectors that we had embarked upon in the previous session. Now, we need to know a little more about vectors. We said something about the dot product. We need to say a little more. How do we calculate the dot product between two two dimensional vectors, where you know the components. So, let me take a graphical view of this. So, I have two vectors, let me call them v 1 and v 2. And I express these in terms of their components. So, I associate with them their perpendicular components. I am assuming that these are the two perpendicular directions here. I will just show them in blue. These are the perpendicular unit vectors. Let me call them u 1 and u 2. It is customary to use a cap over the unit vector. And therefore, I have these components here. The red one for v 2 and let me use black for v 1. So, I call this v 1 2 because this is v 1 2 u 2 cap and this is v 1 1 u 1 cap here and this is v 2 2 u 2 cap and v 2 1 u 1 cap. And there I have a very simple relationship v 1 is v 1 1 u 1 cap plus v 1 2 u 2 cap and v 2 is v 2 1 u 1 cap plus v 2 2 u 2 cap. And let me now use the symbol for dot product which is a dot. So, v 1 dot v 2 we all know it to be essentially the product of corresponding components and then sum. So, sum of products of corresponding components, which I can expand as v 1 1, v 2 1 plus v 1 2, v 2 2. So, this is an important concept that we often encounter. We could, if I have perpendicular components for a vector, and if I do the same thing for all the vectors in a space, I can take the dot product of two vectors in that space by simply multiplying the corresponding perpendicular component lengths and adding these over all the component directions. So, of course, in three dimensions, I would have three such perpendicular components. And you know, although we cannot visualize more than three dimensions, we can certainly conceive of them conceptually, at least for a finite number. And then after all, what is a two dimensional vector? A two dimensional vector is just an ordered pair of two, well for the moment real numbers. But later we will also allow complex numbers and you know why we are so fond of complex numbers. Now, you have some idea why we like to use complex numbers too. Well, let us get a better idea of what I am trying to say. Let us now relate vectors and first sequences. So, let us do that. Let us vectors and sequence. What is a sequence? A sequence is a discrete signal, so to speak. You know that. So, suppose you have a finite length sequence with only two points. Let us say again without any loss of generality that the two points are at 0 and 1. So, you could for example, think of v 1 1 v 1 2 as a two point sequence and so also v 2 1 v 2 2. So, what I am trying to point out is that you could think of the two vectors that we drew a few minutes ago v 1 and v 2 as two two point sequences. And you could think of 
three point sequences, four point sequences, ten point sequences. Essentially, if a sequence has ten non zero values contiguously located, ten possibly non zero values, meaning all other values are guaranteed to be zero, then you could think of it as a ten, ten dimensional vector. And as long as the sequence has finite number of non zero points, you are quite all right in calling it a vector of finite dimension. There is an exact correspondence. And now, you also get an exact correspondence between the dot products of two sequences and the dot product of two vectors. In fact, it is almost trivial. If you think of these two sequences, which we call v 1 and v 2, you could take their dot products, go back here. So, I have a product of the corresponding components, multiply v 1 1 and v 2 1 and v 1 2 and v 2 2 multiply the corresponding components and add. Now, you could of course, take this to three dimensions, you could take it to ten dimensions. So, defining a dot product between two finite dimensional vectors or finite length sequences is not a problem at all now. Now, you could take one step further. You could take this to infinite length sequences. The only change is now you have a series instead of just a finite sum. So, you can visualize two discrete signals or two sequences, where potentially all the points are non-zero. Let us take an example. So, let us consider the two sequences x 1 n, which is equal to half the power of n u n or it is essentially half to the power of n for n greater than equal to 0 and 0 for n less than 0. And let us assume x 2 n is one third to the power of n u n, which implies that it is one third to the power of n for n greater than or equal to 0 and 0 for n less than 0. Can we conceive of a dot product between x 1 n and x 2 n? Remember, it is not see when I say x 1 n, one must not misunderstand it to meet the mean that specific point, you know, x 1, x 2 are entities, they are sequences. So, the dot product is essentially summed over all n the corresponding products of components. In this case, this would become summation n going from 0 to infinity, half to the power of n, one third to the power of n, which is essentially summation n going from 0 to infinity 1 by 6 to the power of n, which is a very simple sum to calculate. It is the first term, which is for n equal to 0 equal to 1 divided by the common ratio 1 minus 1 by 6. So, the denominator is 5 by 6 and therefore, you have 6 by 5. So, this is the dot product between x 1 and x 2. Now, you see here of course, you had an infinite number of dimensions associated with each of those so called vectors. So, now you know how to think of discrete sequences as vectors, that is not too difficult to generalize starting from the finite dimensional vectors that we are familiar with. Of course, here I took what is called a one sided sequence, that means I had the non zero points all on one side of a specific chosen point. I could choose what I call two sided sequences. That means, I could have potentially all the points being non zero all over the set of integers, a minor variation. The summation from n equal to minus infinity to n equal to plus infinity needs to be maintained as it is, you cannot contract that summation, that is all. Anyway, I therefore leave it to you as an exercise to consider one such case. Let me write down that exercise calculate the dot product of the sequences x 1 n is half raised to the power mod n for all n. Now, here this is what I call a two sided sequence or you know a sequence which is non zero all over the set of integers and x 2 n which is one third raised to the power of mod n for all n 
which is again a two sided sequence. Now, that is a simple exercise and I leave it to you to do it. All right. So, we are quite convinced that we know how to calculate dot products. Now, you know the first thing I am going to do is now to give a more formal name to dot product, like we did. You know, we call perpendicular, we said is a term we use more in high school geometry. Dot product is again a term we use more in high school. Now, in college, we would like to use slightly more formal terms, which also mean the same notion in a more generic context and therefore, we will use the term inner product. So, we use the term inner product for dot product henceforth. Formal term or more general term for dot product. And we will use this to denote the inner product. You know, you put a comma and you have two triangular brackets and you put the arguments of the inner product on two sides of the comma. For example, in the exercise that I gave you and the exercises I have been working out, the arguments are x 1 and x 2. We will see more about the inner product in the next session. Thank you.